Hey guys, Matthew here. So this is not going to be another episode of the BTB series. Uh, this is actually going to be the recap of the 200C challenge. This is a video I made the other day that I'm remaking now because it was in 480p and we weren't actually done with the challenge. Now I can safely say that we are 100% done with the challenge. The mirror is acquired. We started from 200 chaos and we got a mirror. So the point of this video is to go over how I did it. Uh, to go over basically all the actual numbers so you guys can see um, everything there is to see about this challenge. So we started with 200 chaos. We actually have a mirror here, but we have a lot more than a mirror because there's a lot of stuff we have not sold yet uh, that will contribute to way more. So if we use excellence, we can see that um, we actually have a net worth of 42,275 chaos, which by the way is also much less than what it really is, and I'll go over that in this video. If I go to uh, the um, PoE Ninja here under currency, we can see that mirrors are 34,000.3 uh, 34.3 thousand chaos, sorry, and we have over 42, which means uh, we're almost like at 1.25 mirrors. And then we, if we look at the actual numbers uh, in the high trust factor, basically that means once all my items, if all my items sold at, what, at the value they're actually worth. Uh, so for example, what I mean by that as high trust factors, for example, uh, twice enchanted sell for 16C, they're counted at 16C by excellence. In reality, I've been selling them for 20C very very easily uh, but excellence doesn't consider that it doesn't consider the price I put them at it only considers the price that they're listed for on um, on average on let's say PoE Ninja and PoE uh, watch and the reason for that is because it doesn't consider the fact that selling in bulk amounts to more currency uh, so as you can see this is basically the line of currency how we've been basically uh, progressing through the challenge on a day-to-day -day basis whatever this little spike here was a really really uh, expensive sale I think it was like 20 exalts or something uh, very expensive sale the other stuff as you can see though is fairly linear uh, the the lines that are flat is basically when I'm not online and uh, let's go over the numbers shall we so price of a mirror 34,000 chaos actual value of the items 45,000 chaos which means uh, we're you know over 11,000 chaos above a mirror so at one point one one mirror and a third in the actual challenge and if we consider low trust factor what that means basically is items that I'm not sure will ever sell but that I know are that are worth that much uh, so for example if we go here and check it like this Naga and gamma who's flame with plus two range it's two exalts right it's actually way more than that but I just put it at two exalts because I was trying to sell it I know it's worth more because a buddy of mine sold one for three exalts and it didn't even have rolls this good because this is nearly perfect. So two exalts, it's actually probably worth around four, but even in the low trust factor, I counted it as basically 2x. And in the high trust factor, this item isn't counted. And it's the same for a lot of other items that basically uh, I'm not sure if they'll ever sell. So they're low trust factor because I know they're worth that much, but they're not meta and there's not a lot of people who may want them. So I'm not even going to count them. But if I was to count them, then we'd actually be looking about 52,000 chaos, uh, which that would be um, that would be like a mirror and a half. This took about 50 hours, 50.7 hours of flipping. I calculated all the time that I actually spent flipping actively, uh, and it's 50.7 hours. Basically, how I did that is I added up the time of all the VODs because this was all streamed on Twitch. Two of the VODs are missing, but I knew how long they lasted for. So, 15.7 hours of flipping. About a thousand chaos per, per, per hour if we consider low trust. If we don't, it's more like a 900, 950 or something. That might sound impressive to some people, but it's really not that big. It's like 4.55x per hour. Uh, actually, since exalts are tanking now, uh, it's almost 6x per hour. So at that point, it's becoming a little bit more interesting. But it's still not excessively uh, crazy, especially, uh, you know, after a league like Legion. Uh, this is not numbers that are very satisfactory. But the reason why they're not so bad uh, is because of how economically slow, or as I put here, dead, the league is. In terms of, 
in terms of the economy ever since like the third week of the league everything is moving at an extremely slow pace compared to any other time uh any other league basically or you know prior to the league let's say in the first couple weeks which is normal when leagues aren't excessively good people leave very quickly uh, in a league like legion almost everybody was still playing after like two months the player retention was super great but that's not going to happen every single league and that's only normal you can't always be triple a leagues either way we still managed to flip uh basically uh one exalt into a mirror in about a week uh, a week and a day is how long it took to get those 50 hours of flipping done uh yeah a week and a day basically we started on saturday last week and we finished yesterday which is sunday uh so obviously 50.7 hours is a fair bit of time a fair bit of play time in a single week uh but since the challenge was going on it was my streaming debut uh it made sense to to actually be playing that much in another league though for example uh in legion or for example if you're doing this in the first few weeks of a league you could honestly expect double the results so this one thousand this one thousand chaos per hour could be two thousand, and in another league, instead of exalts being at two hundred, they might be at one hundred sixty. So not only are you or sorry two thousand. So not only are you doubling the amount of chaos per hour you're making. So let's say two thousand, but exalts would be at like one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty. So you're also getting another you know twenty five percent there from from uh, two hundred chaos per exalts, uh, which at that point would amount to a lot of the exalts per hour. So if we actually do the math here, uh, if you were to get like 2,000 chaos per hour and exalts were only 150, you'd be making something like 13x per hour. And at that point, you could say that you're making a lot of currency. And it's actually reasonable to assume that this number can be achieved uh, in a league uh, where basically the economy is just very, very healthy. Now that we've gone over the numbers, the proof, and all that stuff, let's actually talk about how I did it. Um, basically, there was two parts to how I did this. The first part was flipping well-rolled uniques, buying low, and selling high. Uh, so, if, for example, if I go to weapons here, and I look at a void battery, which is 2.9 exalts, this is basically the base value. If you drop, if you drop a void battery right now, uh, and you're playing the game, you use the price macro on it, it's going to say it's worth 2.9 exalts. Now, the thing on this is that there's rolls, right? There's a roll that is, you know, cast speed and increased global uh, global uh, critical strike chance. If I get a roll, which is a void battery, that instead of having, you know, whatever these rolls are, it has something like 18% cast speed and like 64% increased crit chance. Instead of being worth 2.9x, that void battery would probably be worth 6 and if you're lucky enough to be able to snipe one that's, let's say, 20 cast speed and 65 crit chance, which would be considered perfect, you can sell it for over 10 exalts. So you go from 3 into 10. Why? Just because the rolls on the item are good. So this is one example. Uh, if you do this for all the uniques and also for the flasks, for the armors, for the accessories, for literally everything there is in the game, uh, you end up with a lot of currency per hour from basically just uh, from just well rolled uniques uh, because the more things you're looking for at the same time uh, the more likely you are to have a ding on your life on your life searches uh, because something pops up if you're only life searching a few things especially if they're super super well rolled or super super rare that's that ding is going to happen way less often because obviously there's less chance of it happening in the first place so that's basically one of the one of the methods, I made a lot of currency, very well-rolled uniques, and uh, then also buying uh, buying low and selling high. So I'd buy, um, I'd buy uniques, for example, that were just, for some reason, r really cheap. Uh, so for example, here we have Wind Shrieks, 1.1 uh, Exalt. If I go in game, I can show you guys a pair here, which is one-off perfect. It's 19 elemental damage and 15 elemental resistances. So one-off perfect with pretty good increased armor. I bought this for 1x. It's even got a rege uh, regen enchant on it, which is like one of the best ones, I believe, for summoners. Selling it for 3x. Tripled my money, single trade, uh, and that's basically the, the buy low, sell high uh, that I'm talking about. So that was the first thing we did for currency. 
The second thing we did was basically buying items one at a time, two at a time, five at a time, whatever, and then selling them in big, big bulk. Uh, so one of the things that I was doing for a while was, um, where are they? Possessed foes. I was buying possessed foes for about 25 to 30 chaos when people were undercutting themselves uh, to try to sell them quickly. And then I would sell them in bulk for uh, up to 45 at some point. And then as time went on, now it's more like 40c in bulk. So every time I'd buy one, let's say at 45, or, or sorry, at 30, uh, at 25 or at 30, and I'd sell it at 40. If I bought it at 30, I was making 10 chaos. If I bought it at 25, I was making 15 chaos. And I was getting those pretty often, right? And by pretty often, I mean like easily 20, 30 per hour. So like one every couple minutes, one would pop up. Obviously, if you were doing only that, that wouldn't be very profitable. But the, th the thing is, if you're doing that, and then you're adding up also Twice Enchanted's and all the other ones that are also good, uh, then at the end of the day, we, you can end up with numbers that are really, really high. Uh, so from just Prophecies, Div Cards, uh, Fossils, Scarabs, etc., that was the other 50% of the currency I made. Uh, so for example, I did explain that in the last video I made. Frigid fossils, wow, they took a dip. So frigid fossils, I was buying them for one C each for an entire day. That was basically the first thing I flipped, uh, those and rusted bestiary scarabs. I was buying them for one C each, selling them for three C each, and I was buying them uh, up to like 50 at a time sometimes uh, because nobody else was uh, doing this uh, until I started you know, streaming it and then everybody started doing it. Uh, so that, that was basically frigid fossils. Then you can do it. You can also apply that to all the other fossils. As as you can see, jagged is what I've been doing on stream a whole lot in the past couple days to finish up the challenge. And what happened to them? They doubled up in price. Uh, and there is same thing kind of goes for scarabs. Uh, so rusted bestiaries. Let's see, bestiary scarab, rusted bestiary scarab. Uh, bestiary scarab here also crashing. That's only because a lot less people are actually farming beasts. Uh, because selling the rare, like the good beasts, is super hard. So pe they're they're not like imprints are not even one x each anymore. But these, for example, I was buying one two c, like one to two c. When I started doing this, people were really really selling them for cheap, uh, and I was paying all the way up to four c each when I did this the first day, uh, before like everybody else started doing it. And uh, I was selling them in bulk for 18 per X when exalts were 200, which means I was basically selling them for 11 point something C each. So if I was buying them for 1C, I was making 10C. If I was buying them for 2C, I was making 9C. And the most I'd pay for them was 4C, where I would make 7C profit. And those I could buy sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50 at a time from people. And I was selling them for exalts like literally almost instantly. Because uh, like I said, because nobody else was doing that before I started streaming, uh, I was kind of like the only uh, one of the only um, actual uh, supplier for people who wanted to farm a lot of beasts. Uh, so people would basically the same guy would always come back to me and buy me out, buy out my entire stock like every 15 minutes. So that was pretty nuts. That's pretty much the gist of it, to be completely honest. So when it comes to buying and buying singles and selling, uh, selling them one at a time, there's basically a couple ways you can go about it. Uh, so one of them would be to basically go on Path of Exile here, and uh, what you could do, for example, you could go to Frigid Fossils, which is what I was doing, right? You go to Frigid Fossils and you can live search them. Anytime one of them pops up, somebody lists a, a Frigid Fossils, it's gonna pop up. Another way you can go about it is to look by price, right? To look at the cheapest, uh, the cheapest ones, and then you can go down. And whenever you see people who have more than one, so for example, I was buying the minimum three at a time on the first day. Uh, but somebody sometimes you'll find people who have like a, a twenty stack, and then they don't just have that twenty stack; they actually have like ten other stacks of twenty. Uh, so you can buy like all of those, like two hundred, and then relist them for six hundred C tripling your money and making 400c or over 2x in the process so that's one of the methods to make currency either you live search them either you obviously uh have to go down to list and just whisper people and spam the fuck out of people basically 
The other method that I was making currency that I was talking about was world world, world uniques. So how do you make filters uh, for those? Basically, if you want to live search them to be able to buy them. Well, it's fairly simple. Once again, you want to go on PoEDB. If you go under uniques, all over here, uh, then you can have access to basically every single unique in the game. At, that, at which point you can basically uh, take one unique at a time. So for example, if I was to go Lycosidae, uh, Lycosidae, and then what you do is you look at the base price of a Lycosidae, so about 8 chaos, and then you can mess around by clicking the rolls to see which roll adds the most value. So if I look for perfect armor, 20 chaos, all right. If I look for perfect life, uh, 45 chaos, so life is going to be important here. And if I look for... Uh, perfect chance to block not a whole lot so here I know that basically maximum life is going to be the most important role so I can add basically maximum life 40 and all of a sudden I'm only going to see perfect life rolls uh, so for example this right here you could purchase and flip it so I just go in basically whisper this guy be like hey I want to buy your oh, well I can't do it but hey I want to buy your Lycos today because it's perfect right it's got that 40 life, which is what seemed to be adding the most value. Now, if 40 life doesn't add enough value to where it's worth flipping, in your opinion, you can also go, let's say, perfect chance to block, or maybe perfect armor. So maybe what you're wanting is perfect armor and perfect chance to block. As you can see, at that point, it starts to be pretty interesting as to how much they're actually worth. Uh, so as you can see here, perfect, perfect, five off perfect, you're buying them for like you know 5c and you're selling them for 70 or whatever uh this egocentrism guy is known for doing this every single league he just buys well rolled uniques and then relist them for for a higher price uh by the way ego you're one of the reasons why i actually looked into starting to do that uh when i i saw all your listings so if you watch this video pogs man all thanks to you so uh you can do that with basically every single unique and then you build up your own little database of items that you think are worth doing obviously you don't have to make filters for every single one of these uniques in the game like there's a lot right i personally have made filters in my database for almost every single one of these uniques every single one that offers a profit margin is basically in my database uh which you can have access if you want to look into that via patreon that being said not at all necessary just wanted to plug it real quick uh, making it yourself is only a matter of, you know, putting the time. So you could do that for all the meta uniques. If you're wondering how do I figure out what, uh, which uniques are meta, so, you know, you are basically limited to 80, 80 web sockets. So what web sockets are is basically how uh, the game allows you to activate live searches. So if you activate a live search, here it says, it said connecting, that meant it was connecting to the live socket. Then it says searching. That means it's searching for all the uniques. Uh, it's basically searching for the API, and whenever somebody adds an item that uh, you know uh, fits the requirements of 40 life, that's a Lycosidae. If you're live searching it, it's gonna pop up, right? The thing is, this little live search here, the searching that that's basically one live uh, one web socket. You are limited to 80. Well, not you. Everybody is limited to 80, which means at any given time, you can only have 80 WebSocket live searches. And that is basically per IP address. Uh, so maybe even if you had, you know, access to my database and thousands of links with uh, perfectly or almost perfectly rolled uniques, basically my uh, how I made my, data my database, I didn't go for perfect and I didn't go for like off perfect. I basically went over every item one by one figured out what was the best combo for every single unique to see uh, where the profit really stood and uh, what seemed to be actually selling and uh, that's that's how, how I made it so for example if you wanted to make it for a little bit for yourself you can go under PoE Ninja under build section and other items those are basically only filtering uniques uh, so what you can do is you know uh, choose the most the the top 80 most well uh sorry most used uniques because you know that those are going to move you know you'll be able to resell those for a lot of profit because a lot of people are using them right it's not like that niche little thing that nobody's using so for example if i go to lycosa today there's 0.4 percent 
of players using it. So even if I snipe a perfect Lycosidae, there's not a whole lot of people using Lycosidae. If I snipe uh, a perfect Cinder Swallow, for example, that will probably sell for a lot more and a lot more profit margin uh, simply because a lot of people are using it and it's going to be also way easier to sell it. So you could go down that list and uh, choose the, you know, 80 most used uniques that you see in here. It's whatever you want. There's multiple strategies to building uh, which, uh, you know, live searches you want. If you don't want to be pinged all the time, what you could do is consider, you know what, what I'll do is I'll basically just live search uh, the, the 80 most expensive items in this items in the games. For example, I'll live search House of Mirrors. When people uh, put those up for cheap, I'll buy those. Uh, then I'll live search like the Queen's Sacrifice because, you know, when people put those up for cheap, I'll buy them. And then you go into like weapons and be like, okay, so I'll take like the five most expensive weapons, five most expensive flasks, etc, etc. Because at that point, you're not going necessarily over uh, the most used items, but you're going over the most expensive items, which will more than likely offer bigger margins of profit. So for example, a Soul Ripper, at, at the very least, is nine exalts. So the difference between any Soul Ripper and a super, super well-rolled Soul, uh, Soul Ripper, which would be like 40%, because you know it's only one roll, is probably a matter of a couple exalts. So at the very least, you know you're making a few X uh, just because it's already an expensive item. The thing is, if you want to do that, you need the base capital to be able to buy out these items when you see them come up, right? Uh, quick example of that would be uh, these these tamings, which are basically 1.3 exalts. I bought a lot of perfect tamings because it's only one roll, right? 20 to 30. It's just one roll. And you can buy these for 1.3x. People list them up for 1.2, 1.3x. And the thing is, as soon as you have like a 30% all res roll, this number here, instead of being 1.3, you can sell them for 2.5 all the way up to 3x each. Uh, so doubling and even more than doubling uh, your, your investment on it. Uh, which is really, really nice uh, because you're making like more than 1x per trade at that point. And since it's a pretty uh, pretty used unique, they also sell very, very quickly. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I go here to builds, the taming should have a fair bit of people using it. So 2%. Obviously, there's not that many people who are not summoners. Cause summoners won't use that, right? Or necromancers. Uh Assassins probably won't use that either, but Raiders and Dead Eyes are probably going to use the Taming. Uh, and so there's 11% of people playing Raider or Dead Eye, and there's 2% of people uh, who are these people for f probably. If I go here and prime the Taming, so 10% of Raiders are using the Taming, and if I go to Dead Eye, the Taming, 24% of uh, actual dead eyes are using the taming so you know that it's an item that's fairly fairly used by a population that tends to have a lot of currency aka people who play dead eye and raider uh, because their bow builds like elemental hit or like tornado shot so very expensive builds so you know these items are going to move so anyways this video has been going on for long enough hopefully you enjoyed uh, i had a blast with the challenge 200c uh, to a mirror uh, at some point, I was wondering if it was even going to happen because of how slow training became, uh, especially with the Zizzly coming out. But we still managed to do it. We still got it done, and it was a blast. The next challenge that we're teasing here is going to be the 10 Chaos to Headhunter Challenge. So before I leave, I actually do have a little bit, a little something to show you guys that is being uh, made by uh, one of our supporters here on the channel, which is uh, Kfish. I do. I will have a link in the description and in the comments to his YouTube channel and also his Twitch. If you guys want to check him out, he kind of does the same uh, kind of content that I do, at, at least on Twitch with all the flipping stuff. Uh, but he's working on a little something right now. This is basically just a very, very rough preview, but let me show you guys. So it's an overlay that is, that, uh, is going to um, fetch the data of basically what all the currencies are worth in chaos at any given time in the league and it's just one button you press it overlay comes up you repress it overlay goes down so never again do you have to be looking at your stash and be like oh wait how much how much are exalts right now boom exalts 175c there you go you're gone you're, you're done never have to worry about it anymore uh so 
very very helpful little tool that he's currently making for the community uh, so if you guys want to see that happen please let me know in in the in the comments uh, he's gonna be reading all, all of them for sure I think it's a, it's gonna be a great little tool that allows you to just you know stay in game not have to go to PoE watch or use the train macro because it's much slower than just hitting one quick button seeing what you need to see uh, not getting scammed when you're trading people obviously not overpaying and also not underselling so final little note for this video I want to say a huge thank you to my patreons Alex the other Alex uh, fix Faxer, Francesco Val Jose uh, which is Kfish which is graciously making this uh, this little tool for the community Kai Stan and vengeance as always also Corey and empty and the guy who wishes to remain anonymous thank you guys all so much for the support I do stream on Twitch as much as I possibly can with my full-time job uh, so you know if you want come check us out at uh, twitch TV slash path of math otherwise that's gonna be it for me in this video hopefully you guys enjoyed I'll catch you guys in the next one peace